Uh, thank you for uh, sitting down with me. I, this is uh, we actually have not. This is the first time we're basically meeting. I think like uh, yes. talking to each other, basically. <laughs> yes, um, it is. But obviously, I'm familiar with your work. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to you know uh, sit down uh, and chat. And so I guess the to start off with, I'll just go um, uh, during during uh, if you have free time when you have free time. Uh, what do you mm-hmm. usually? What are you usually doing these days during your free time? During my free time, I am either watching cooking videos on YouTube, mm, or okay. <laughs> doom scrolling on Twitter, or sure. uh, <laughs> or um, I started playing Valheim last couple weeks. So uh, that's, that's the the Viking one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have some friends who are into that one. Yeah. Uh, what kind of cooking video? Like, what are your what? Ch- which cooking channels? Are there specific ones you are a fan of, or do you just watch any cooking videos? Um, yeah, there's definitely ones that I'm fans of, and like sometimes they're just like randomly recommended. But I watch a lot of videos by Ochikeron, um, mm. Aaron and Claire, Mangachi, like a lot of Asian centric ones. I also like watching. Um, um, cooking with bat- bat- Babish mm-hmm. and um, You Suck at Cooking is like another favorite channel of mine. Gotcha. So are, are you um, are you much of a cook yourself? Do you, do you cook often? Uh, I cook often, but I'm not like great or anything. I just like to eat. So <laughs> well, therefore I must cook. <laughs> to me, that sounds like you're being humble. What would you say is like your best dish? Uh, that you are able to sort of whip out for people like, ha, here, if you want a taste of my cooking, what what, what do you uh, bring out for people? Oh, wow. Um, I guess if I have time, then I'd um, make like Japanese curry. Um, okay. Because that takes a while. Um, of course, I buy like the little, the blocks uh, sure. of roux, but then I like to grate in like an apple and ginger and stuff into like the the sauce itself and then just let the meat cook for like a uh, couple hours mm. <laughs> so that's something that i uh, that's easy to cook like a big pot of sure, that sure. you can k- share with a lot of people yeah yeah and i mean curry's great i um <laughs> it's funny i haven't eaten lunch yet so i'm like oh boy let's keep, let's keep talking <laughs> about food um <laughs> Uh, I'm down for that. Yeah, <laughs> I can talk about food uh, for hours. Um, so, you, so you mentioned that you uh, it's a lot of Asian centric um, mm-hmm. sort of uh, videos and or dishes or whatever. Um, and so, is there like a particular even go, let's say going into more specifics of that? Like, are is there like a particular country's cuisine that you are really really interested in, or like a couple of them, or or, or what? Huh. Um, I guess um, these days it seems very very centered around Japanese and Korean cuisine. Oh, Korean, okay. Because I've been watching a lot of those. Um, and um, mainly because, like, uh, I like that they they tend to have a lot of um, simpler or um, more healthier alternatives. Mm, okay. <laughs> and, like, I grew up eating a lot of, like, Chinese and Vietnamese food, which is probably why I'm, like, leaning towards those dishes because they're like new and exciting for me sure sure um any have you cooked any korean dishes uh nothing complex really <laughs> well, what have you what have you uh what uh, have you uh done i guess um i learned to make kimchi pancakes oh okay and like like the um, and like the little like sides sort of like the, the banchan? bean sprouts yeah mm-hmm. so like those ones are like um ones you can like make really easily and like it's nice to have like vegetables on the side yeah and then i feel like um if you make like um bulgogi that's pretty easy if you can just buy you can just buy a marinade mm-hmm, and just mm-hmm. pour it on yeah my uh my wife will sometimes make banchan um and it's really mm-hmm. nice to just have like uh just if we're especially if we're eating something with rice or so i'll just bring out some banchan or that or if i'm um visiting uh, my my parents or whatever uh, my mom is a really mm-hmm. really really good cook and so uh her refrigerator is stocked with always like feels like 10 <laughs> 15 different all homemade banchan all just 
delicious. Oh, and that sounds amazing. It is amazing. And like, I, I haven't <laughs> been in, you know, I haven't been able to go uh, visit and, you know, like, uh, I usually go about like yeah. once a year ish for like holidays. Um, uh, and mm-hmm. I have not been able to enjoy uh, that cooking for, for so long. I am like, I can't wait because whenever Hopefully I leave soon, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're like approaching the, we're getting there, but um, yeah, I whenever I go home, I I feel like a king, like because because she just <laughs> she's she also like uh just is like uh in Korean culture it's definitely like a thing of have you eaten yet have you eaten hey eat you know oh, in yes. a lot of Asian cultures that's a big thing <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware so it's like hey. You come home, eat, 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 and then just putting tons of things in front of you. It's, it's the best. It's always the judging of, you're not eating enough, and why are you, you know, putting a little weight around <laughs> exa- the waist? I was it's gonna like, say, well... it's like maybe because you're feeding me so much. <laughs> it's like, mm, mm, yeah, yeah mm, looking a little, uh, mm, okay. Well, anyway, here's ten bowls you... of food. Oh my god. You gotta eat like to uh, make up for the time you weren't here, basically. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Do you do cooking yourself? <laughs> no, I should. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I would say I don't have time, but that's not true. I'm just lazy. My my wife does a lot of cooking. Um, and but oh, but if it were all left up to me, I'm just like, uh, just. I don't like I I love food. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I I'm a <laughs> big enthusiast of trying all different types of food, but. I just feel like I mean, when I make, you gotta have like the one dish that you make, right? Oh God, not really. It's like, <laughs> like I like, I'm so it's funny. Like, uh, if I'm left to my own devices, I'm just like, I'll just order food. I'll just go. Well, we, not, we can't go to restaurants now, but I uh, just order mm-hmm. food, or uh, it's either that or something super easy. So like, I uh, just. I'll just fry some eggs, put them on rice, mix them up, <laughs> like you know, with some. Hey, can't go wrong with. Listen, the you can't go wrong <laughs> with that. But that's I'm I'm like a simple fool when it comes to that. Like I really appreciate like you know a home cooked meal and, um, you know, I I I, I should like I've been reading um. I don't know how, fam- like, do you read a lot of, like, uh, food books or anything like that? No, I haven't. Mm, uh, I should, though. <laughs> I'm reading one right now called uh, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. It's by uh, uh, mm-hmm. Samin Nasrat. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but basically uh, uh, she's a very, uh, like, uh, talented cook and just talking about, like, the sort of um, scientific and just... Not even just scientific, but yeah, kind of scientific qualities of mm-hmm. those four things: salt, fat, acid, heat. How they affect flavors and cooking and that sort of thing. And it's a book of recipes, and then there are recipes in there where I'm like, I know I can make this. Like even even a dummy like me can make this because I think a part of it is also you know I have <laughs> cooked in the past, <laughs> and I, I you know I have mm-hmm. very little experience, so I feel like I'm like I either mess it up or I'm like oh, I should have just ordered food. <laughs> like I should just, I should just it is a lot of work it is a it's lot, a of, lot work. of prep yes and then like the cooking itself and by the time you're done it's just like well can somebody feed me because i'm tired <laughs> now <laughs> yeah uh like it's why you know i have you know friends who do cook who are very good cooks you know uh mm-hmm. and my wife is also a very good cook and it's like i i super appreciate and like admire that because it's just it you know, to get to that point, I mean, yeah, you know, you just got to start doing it. I know, like, any craft, any skill, you know, if I want to get better at cooking, I just got to start practicing and getting good, but I just, I don't know. But you got to have, like, the passion. I got to have the passion. <laughs> I love to eat. Do I love to cook? I don't know. But uh, going back to that book, <laughs> Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, I, there are recipes where I'm like, okay, that's not hard, and, uh, okay, maybe... And it's stuff like that, or I don't know if you've ever heard of the mm-hmm. website uh, Serious Eats, but um, yeah, yeah, Serious Eats has like there's stuff on there. I'm like, okay, yeah, I I could make this. Like, so I'm definitely a fan of simple recipes. Yeah, yeah, simple recipes. <laughs> and even then, it nice. takes me like two hours. Mm. Is there like a really <laughs> simple recipe that for you is like, but it's like always like a winner? Like, you're like, oh, like a a go to. Like, this is not hard to make, but it, it tastes like like delicious well i guess you can't go wrong with like baking a 
the slab of salmon. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so easy. Yeah, you just, you can salt, pepper, lemon, or you can just like smear it on like a very thin layer of miso paste. Mm. Just throw it in and like bake it for like 12 minutes. It's so easy. Same with like roasting vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salmon's great. Have you done like the, um, where you kind of like coat it? With like a sort of like a mayonnaise, onions sort of like layer, and then you bake it, and it it develops like a crust, like a really good Ooh. crust. Like it sounds not appealing. Like just slather your salmon with mayonnaise, <laughs> but what happens is it just gets into a nice, very tasty sort of creamy crust coating. It's it, it, it's quite good. I'm um, gonna have to try. Yeah, it. like uh, I, I know there are a ton of like different variations, but like my my uh. My mom um, has like her own way of doing it, where uh, it, it's it's very very good. Like it, it turns into just this like uh, delicious like oh yeah. That, I guess this <laughs> uh, it sounds not great. I mean I love mayonnaise, but no, it sounds great. But I, I know for some people like what just slathering mayonnaise. Well, you don't slather it. <laughs> like, you don't just pour it on there. But yeah, it, it, it's good. Did did your parent uh, parents? Uh, were either of them like cooks or? Uh, oh yeah. Um, so my parents, uh, they they used to own a restaurant. They they don't um, right now. Mm. Um, and so uh, unfortunately, I or better for for better or for worse, I worked there for many years. Okay. Uh, and um, it's weird because um, for stuff like the restaurant, you need they have to somewhat follow a recipe, mm. but a lot of it's intuitive. Sure. And so it's hard to learn recipes when they're all intuitive because it's just you gotta you gotta keep tasting it. It's just like, well, mm, yeah. I, <laughs> I still need to know what's <laughs> the proportion of like how much salt to sugar to whatever, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, if I just kind of sprinkle a little at a time, I'm gonna be here sprinkling a little at a time forever. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah, my my mom. I finally got my mom to um, write down recipes because. Uh, for the longest time, like, and I'm sure it's very similar with your parents, it was like, it's just, it's ratios, and it's just, oh, you just pour this, pour this, and do this, and exactly. taste it, and it's like, oh, what? I don't know, I but I I can't do that, I need, um, so she finally, like, sat down and, like, wrote them out, and that is, all. Like, now that I have these, I definitely should also try making these as well, um, and also, going back to the book I was mentioning, like, uh, um, mm-hmm. she mentions, like, you know, in a lot of restaurants and a lot of cooking, there's just, you know, they just, the tendencies, oh, you don't want to over salt, just do a little sprinkle. But most chefs will just grab like a handful of salt and just throw it in. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah just yeah. throw it in, <laughs> taste it. If it, if it's too salty, you know, put some of this in to even it out. And that's it. Like, it's like, that's, that's balls. That's, that's, that, that's some cojones <laughs> there that I, I don't have as a, as a novice, uh, to, so I, I like watching videos because, you know, like, what's a pinch of salt? Like, mm. sometimes, like, I watched a video by Gordon Ramsay. He's like, pinch of salt, and it's like a giant handful. <laughs> I'm like, your pinch is much larger than what I would have done. It's a very aggressive pinch, yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, while I could and would gladly just talk about food the entire time, uh, <laughs> are there any um, other, what would you say are some, like, defining interests of yours that like uh to get to get to know you um what what would be like some um hobbies or interests that are like oh these are your big things i feel like i'm really boring Mm -hmm. (laughs) you think so all i do is watch a bunch of youtube and cooking um i guess i i also have like to do cosplay yeah i was about to say yeah. i've seen you cosplay like <laughs> i don't i don't think that's boring uh so uh you've you've cosplayed uh you know some of the characters mm-hmm. that you voice um and they're good cosplay too i'm like oh shit so how long have you been yeah. doing the the whole cosplay thing so i guess my very 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 first cosplay was in 2008 mm-hmm so long ago it was tenma from school rumble oh Um, shit oh shit (laughs) i just loved school Rumble. i still love school Rumble. it's such a great show i still love it too yeah uh and it it was my first time 
learning to use a sewing machine. A friend of mine taught me, and like my mom had bought this like super ancient one mm. uh, at a garage sale. It was like a wooden one, and you had to like kind of lean off to the side. It was very strange. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trying to figure out how to thread it and stuff. Um, and so like I I. The only thing I made was, like, the vest and the skirt. And, like, from a distance, like, in pictures, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. Up close, you can see all these crazy threads everywhere. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, like, I mean, that's still kind of the case even now because I am a, I'm very much an amateur. A lot of it's kind of, like, guesswork. Like, I'll take, um, like, a vest I made for um, my noir outfit from Persona 5. And um, I took a vest that I already had. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, cut that up use that to make a template and then sewed it up and then I put it on and I was like all right so it's got a weird gap here so I'm just gonna sew this and hopefully nobody notices <laughs> <laughs> add extra buttons and snaps and, and such my costumes always have like a million safety pins on the inside mm. um but I don't know it's it's still fun for me I think it's um about um trying to figure your way through it, sure. <laughs> so to speak. Um, I, I buy a lot of um, parts of my cosplay. Um, sometimes I um, make some of them. Um, I've only dyed fabrics like once or twice. That's very much a process, like a testing process. And yeah, because otherwise if you like dye the one garment you have and it's wrong, then you'll be sad. But sure, sure. <laughs> I just have to go back to one thing. School Rumble, because I never find anyone who, mm -hmm. who like appreciates School Rumble on exactly the same level. Yes. Was Tenma your favorite character, or just the one that you wanted to cosplay? Uh, it was the one that I wanted to cosplay. I do love her, too, mm. but I, I felt like my likeness was most similar to her. Sure. Who was your favorite um, character in, in, in uh, School Rumble? Uh, it'd have to be, um, oh my god, Shades Guy. Oh, Hari Harima. Is... Yes. Hari Guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the best. Yes. Uh, and then he's so relatable uh, yes. <laughs> in all aspects. Yes. Uh, and then uh, final question for School Rumble: uh, Did you have any uh, uh, any any ships? Any uh, any of those OTPs in that? Oh my goodness! Do you even remember? Well... There's because uh, there's one that's still so dear to my heart for like God, fifteen years. I'm still like. Oh, I rewatched it like semi recently. I'm like, God, I still feel this way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, now it makes me re want to rewatch it again. I've watched it probably like three times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think for me, I, I I'm so bad with names. Oh sure, like names I immediately forget. But the girl that's really strong and the really perverted guy, I I always liked their oh, dynamic. Uh, oh god, well, it's I think Suo is the blue haired girl, and then. Uh, mm -hmm. Hanai, this is the glasses guy, right? You're talking about those two? No, no, the... Oh, oh wait, oh, no, the no, perverted the most... guy. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, his name I, I am forgetting, but, uh... Imadori. Imadori, yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, you like that pairing? Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I can, I, I can see that. My, my big, like, flagship, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. was, um, uh, Harima, the main guy. And mm -hmm. Yakumo. Uh, Yakumo? Yes! Oh, I thought it was so... <laughs> That's so sweet. I thought it was so sweet. Like, because uh, the big love triangle was um, Harima, Yakumo, and Harima Eri, the the blonde uh, rich girl. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and I, I thought that was fine, too, but I don't know. There was, I, mm -hmm. I just thought it was so it was so sweet. Yeah, they, they got along so well. They were great partners, and it just... Yeah. It was this great thing, <laughs> and okay, people listening to this are like, "What the fuck is School Rumble?" Don't worry about it. It's an anime, especially go watch for it. some of you. It's like it's before <laughs> your time, before you existed. Just go watch it or something. <laughs> oh, that hurts me if that's the case. But um, oh. basically, uh, like, I, what I loved about their dynamic was Harima. Like uh, normally, this I mean, on, on a surface, very like tough, like shades wearing, like thug guy, but. Uh, th throughout School Rumble, he's like this kind of hardworking, diligent mangaka, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Yakumo is this really shy girl uh, who uh, Harima is in love with Yakumo's super uh, kind of dumb, energetic sister, who you cosplayed <laughs> Tenma. Um, Yakumo, oh. meanwhile, actually is in love with uh, with Harima, 
but Harima doesn't notice, and it's that sort of like he really yeah. he really treats her with a lot of respect because she like helps him with his manga, and he really like appreciates her and is like oh so thankful to her, but has no idea of her feelings. And I'm like oh man, I love that shit. <laughs> I love that shit, dog. Uh, Anyway, that I promise we don't have to talk more about School Rumble for the for the rest of the podcast. But <laughs> uh, but I would be happy to. <laughs> it's like, uh, it is my podcast. I can do whatever I want. But uh, um, okay. He goes through such an existential crisis in the middle, and I I I was like, man, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would say if you haven't seen it, like it's it if it, it it you know I'm not gonna say like it's. Oh, as amazing as you remember, but it, it, it feels really good whenever I rewatch it. Because I've seen it, I think, mm-hmm. you said three times. I think probably mm-hmm. at least three, four times at this point. Like, and yeah, it just, it gives me... It's uh, so funny, like, every time, too. Like, I'm always looking forward to certain, like, gags. And, oh, like, yeah. And, it's still funny. It's just, like, the repetition of it just, it, it works. <laughs> Is there a specific gag you remember? Uh, the rice balls where the girls are making rice balls for the uh, boys after do- working on their school festival. That's right. And they had to guess who made which rice ball. Yeah. And <laughs> how am I guessed wrong? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Do you remember the scene? Uh, uh, this is a this is like a one that involves Yakumo where oh, what is it? They're like uh, somebody is like stuck in a costume and they're tr- like trapped. They fall in a hole in like a through a floor in the second floor and they're stuck and then characters keep coming to like try to like save the person who's stuck and then they get stuck like in the in between the rafters do you remember this at all oh man i vaguely remember it i don't know why i can't rem- i don't it's, remember it's, it as well it's, as it's, it's pretty funny but basically like uh oh god i said we wanted to keep talking about school rumble but fuck it we'll just keep going uh like <laughs> Um, there's this, like, really sweet scene where, like, um, cause, uh, Yakumo has, like, weird psychic powers, kind of, like, I don't know if you remember this. Oh, uh, yeah. But, like, like, the mind reading. Yeah, kind of like that, and, uh, it's, like, her, uh, Yakumo gets stuck, and then, um, uh, her friend, it also gets stuck, and she's, like, well, try to, like, uh, call, you know, your, your, the one who you, like, care about, they'll come, or who cares about you, they'll come get you, or whatever, and the friend thinks it's Hanai, like this big loudmouth glasses guy who like, like is loudly <laughs> in love with her. And then, uh, like she tra- so Yakumo does this thing where she tries, and then she fails. And then was like, "Whoa, what Hanai? You didn't think of Hanai?" And she was like, "Hanai." And then the friend's like, "No, who are you thinking of?" And obviously she was thinking of Harmon. She's like, "No, nothing." And I was like, "Oh my god, this is the best!" Like that blushy, like, "No, oh man, I love that shit." Um, now, I, I guess now we're on the topic of anime. Uh, g- g- mm-hmm. clearly, uh, you, you are familiar with the medium, uh, if you, if you, <laughs> if you cosplayed School Rumble, um, what would you say are, uh, what's your favorite anime? What is your favorite anime? Maybe, maybe some of your favorites, like, uh. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I give a different answer every time, because just, like, there's so oh, many. Oh, yeah, that to- that's um, totally fair. It's hard to remember them all, but. Definitely, School Rumble is one of them. Uh, I feel like Initial D is one that oh, I watched shit. a lot okay. over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Monthly Girls. Um, Mozaki Kun. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I guess I like these like comedic feel good shows. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, oh, Kuroko's Basketball and Prince of Tennis. Oh, into the sports anime as well. Okay. Well, Initial D is kind of in that same vein too, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> what about you? Favorite is uh, Chihaya Furu. I don't know if you know that one. Oh, I have not seen that one. Everyone who's listening to this podcast is like, oh my god, he's going to talk about Chihaya Furu again. Listen, I don't care. <laughs> uh, basically, to TLDR is that Chihaya Furu is about, you know, Karuta? It's, um, it's a Japanese poetry card game where basically uh, mm. there are verses on the cards and a reader will read a verse, and the players, it's a one-on-one game, and they have to hit the card with their hand that has the matching verse. That's basically the the short version of how the game works. It's like, okay. there's cards on the floor, they're sitting, and then they have to, it's like a reflex game, which sounds immensely uninteresting, but as you know, with sports anime or anything with, you know, that doesn't sound necessarily interesting, like, yeah. like it's, 
really, really great. <laughs> uh, the characters are wonderful. Uh, I I think based off your appreciation for something like Nozaki Kun and like you know that sort of well, it's not it's not entirely comedic. It's it's dramatic as well, but uh, mm-hmm. it's really really good. I would say check it out. It's every person I have recommended it to. It has never failed. They instantly are like. When the first couple episodes are like, oh mm. shit, no, this is quite good. Uh, it's very heartwarming. It it's it involve it's just about this community of like play because it's a it's not a popular like game in Japan. So it's like this sort of mm-hmm. niche uh, group of players who are always playing it in tournaments and stuff. And so there's this community aspect to it as well. But it's it's really really good. Um, that's up there. Um, I would say based off you kind of like you mentioned some of the comedy stuff. One of my favorites is a, Have you seen Silver Spoon? No, I haven't seen that either. Do you know of Silver Spoon? No, I don't think I've heard of it. Before. Silver Spoon is uh, it's by the Full Metal Alchemist mangaka. The manga is also great. Uh, I would recommend either if you read you, the manga. I think is also very good. But basically, it's uh, it's about a farming school. The main character is a high school boy who decides to run away from the pressure of Tokyo like high school exams and just goes to a farming school. He's a city kid and just learns about yes. farming. Uh, but it's... Follow your passions. I love it. It's funny because it's not even his passion. So he, he knows nothing about <laughs> farming, but he becomes super passionate as he like learns about all of these things of like what farming is. Because uh, uh, Hiro Marakawa, the mangaka of FMA... Uh, grew up on a farm like so she knows all this oh. stuff so it's very in-depth very like interesting but also really funny and um really inspiring too like there's it's it's uh I, it's also actually very very emotional even though it's also like a comedy manga so uh or anime mm-hmm. as well um it's good i would i would recommend that as well now i like to give the guest a chance uh is there uh either a topic you would like to bring up or a question for me that you would like to ask. Um, it can be anything. And if you don't have anything, don't worry about it. We can keep talking about School Rumble for the rest of the... No, we can talk about uh, <laughs> other things. But, yeah. I guess I'm curious about your... Um, <clears throat> like, um, when you film your your all your things for YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like, how much do you, planning goes into that? And how much of it is the editing like your, your mm. process i guess because i feel like no matter how short anything is i know that was like hours of somebody's life <laughs> that went into it, creating it you know so we talk about the skits specifically the short form ones uh yeah mm. i would say uh so with the skits it's it's interesting because at this point i usually will go into them knowing pretty much what i want both line wise and delivery wise, I might and I'll improvise some takes mm-hmm. here and there. Uh, excuse me, but chances are I know pretty much what I need. Like I have the scene in my head, or sometimes I write it down if it's like a, a more maybe complicated scene that requires like specific dialogue hits. So I would say, question was specifically how much like how much time or how much of it like what is the process like? Was that the question? Yeah, it's yeah, it's a kind of a mix of both. Sure, sure. I guess I'm just curious in general because, I mean, like, is it you? The inspiration comes to you, and then you like, mm. and then you go into it, or is there like, okay, maybe I should come up with some sort of like costuming, like this character should wear this eyepiece <laughs> uh, and this. Ah, uh, costuming, quote unquote. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you. Hey, they they make your characters stand out. Uh, They're important. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, um, yeah. I think once I have an idea. It'll depend. Like sometimes I've done like sponsored stuff, and that's kind of nice because I can mm-hmm. I can like I'll actually go look into the game, maybe look up a trailer, look up the stuff, and like find something to make fun of uh, in the game. The Dragon Quest one really stood out. Yeah, to me. yeah, that one was like, well, and I'm a fan <laughs> of Dragon Quest. So that one was easy. I was like, hey, are you guys like fine with this concept? And they were like, yeah. I was like, great. Uh, I I've, <laughs> I've had very few companies like be like, no, like uh, we don't want you to make fun of our game. That one, for example, is just a very simple. Okay, I have the concept, and then I don't. I don't even think I had to write that one out. I knew. I. It's more like you know the punchlines, so you know where to hit. So oh. it's like, mm-hmm. uh, you you kind of do the back. You 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 do well. No, for that one, 
I probably wrote something out uh, because actually the sponsors, so they li- they like to see a script in advance and and, and uh, check it. Um, so for sponsors, oh. stuff, it's like you write out a script, they approve it, and then sometimes I still tweak it a little bit, but they still have, they still have the final approval on the edit anyway. Um, but then there is like a just you just record the takes. We usually do a couple of each. If there if any improv- improvising comes up on the spot, I just record them. Um, but then I would say. The real uh, sort of what I think makes them, I guess, hit harder and or feels more like my videos is the editing. I'm very particular mm-hmm. about the editing. Oh. So um, even though I have an editor now, uh, Jay, who is listening to this. Thanks, Jay. Jay edits all the long form stuff that I do uh, where it's just mm-hmm. me like, I don't know, eating like 50 Doritos or whatever, like. Or, which is hard work, like, you know, especially if it's, like, uh, raiding all the, the Fire Emblem characters. Like, that 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 takes a lot of work, yeah. putting up all yeah, that. Yeah. But for the sh- for, for the skits, I, uh, I'm i so particular about timing of not just, like, length of lengths of stuff, but, like, uh, for me, the, the rhythm of it is, like, extremely mm-hmm. exacting. So it's, like, I, I don't think I could let... Either I would have to like, sort of, <laughs> train someone to just like, like, but it's so hard to well, like. Well, I think convey. it's sort of like. Yeah. It's, for me, I, I feel like it's almost like thinking of it, um, uh, like music, because mm. you know, you, you know, everybody has like their certain like style and rhythm, and like y- your, your comedic stuff definitely has like its own like rhythm that it's innately you so it makes sense that you would be very particular about your editing right it sounds like yeah yeah basically it, it's just hard to like convey in words and it's just like oh, just let me do it right like um mm-hmm. for instance like i started a let's play channel not that long ago oh god well this is not going to be up by uh, when that let's play channel mm-hmm. went up uh I, there was a i did like a little just tiny video uh announcing it and initially, I had uh, Jay edit uh, like his version because I was like, ah, it's fine, mm-hmm. um, and it was good. Like it was perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. It was like good. But I was like, this is gonna be for my channel. Let me do my cut. And so I took the footage we did, and it was very different. Mm-hmm. I took. I actually picked different takes, huh. and the timing was completely different. Like uh, my my stuff tends to have a much faster rhythm, and. It's very like punchy back forth, back forth, that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So that if there's like a lull or a long beat, uh, I'm really getting like into the nitty gritty of this. But I guess I haven't. No, this is what I want to yeah, know. I guess, I guess I haven't really talked about <laughs> Sorry, this. everybody else listening. But... I, I think people listening uh, are, are, can have interest in this. But yeah, so if there's like a lull or a long beat, uh, it hits harder if, if it's, there's like if there's mm-hmm. a sort of frenetic rhythm. Not frenetic, but sort of back to, you know. I don't know. Like, oftentimes, yeah. when I'm editing a skit, I, I already have the takes that I need. So I'm not even looking at the video. I'm listening to the audio. To me, the audio mm. of, like, how it... Because I already know it looks fine because I looked at the shots already. So it becomes of, like, okay, uh, this audio... need. I want it to interrupt right here. Like, just so, so I uh, shove it here... So it's cutting off this line a bit, and then we need some gap. We need a gap here, and this one ends with this sound. So like an F sound, I need to make sure you can hear that, so I can't cut it off. There's a lot of, uh, like, um, it's definitely a lot of nuance here. I feel like I'm uh, just tooting my own horn, but the, I, there is a lot of thought actually in, put, in putting it into like how I want it to hit, and you know, I, I think one of when I watch, let's say other people's skits like really good skits it's usually not about Mm -hmm. i mean yeah the writing is important and i think you know you have to have a good script and you have to have Mm -hmm. good performances but what kills like what like just like murders a skit is if the pacing is off if the pacing is off if the timing is off of the jokes or it's just sluggish i just i can't it makes me cringe i just can't finish watching it so like when you when you watch like a good skit like a good like well written well performed and well timed, uh, it just feels nice to watch. Whereas some videos it's just it's it's rough. But I don't know. That's mm-hmm. that's always been my sort of and I, and I think that sort of stems from 
uh, my internet origins of like before the video uh i got i got known i got i i grew an audience from audio shit posts on tumblr <laughs> uh oh what yeah 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 that's, <laughs> i had no idea oh yeah like my whole origin story is basically uh uh i'd wanted you know uh like like many of us i wanted to be a voice actor uh from mm -hmm. and graduating from college so this would have been what like nine ten years ago or ish i was like well how the fuck do you do that and i was like well okay what's important is i just i just need to start getting better and so i started a tumblr which is still mm -hmm. up and i did a audio post a day every day for years and that started to stem it's dedication it was just pure uh because i was you know i was in you know <clears throat> i was in michigan right it's like i don't have like access to like i guess i could have gotten online classes but i didn't know that at the time like i, I was just all mm -hmm. i knew is i there might not have been that many at the time either. that's true there you know there it's become much more prevalent now but you know back then not mm -hmm. necessarily and voiceover wasn't something that was taught like at my school i i, I majored in mm -hmm. um media arts and technology which was there was a lot of audio editing video like production and that sort of thing so um i went okay well I know what I want to do, and so I started making these audio posts of just just practicing, and then that sort of turned into like uh, making comedic audio posts, and that was fun of like voicing the characters myself and like sound effect layering and and just doing just little like twenty second sh audio shit posts of just like uh, oh whatever, <laughs> and that um, that I think really helped me not only get better at acting like that i would I, I i credit all my success honestly that any anything i've achieved now was because i decided to sit down and start that and just practice once a day because otherwise i wouldn't have developed the discipline and or the skill set that that i have today yeah, um that's amazing yeah, I know, I, and it really does take dedication to if you know if you're consistently doing something yeah like every day like that and you learn so much in the process too um, when it comes to editing, I'm sure. Yeah, that was I think three, four years. I didn't miss a day. <laughs> I like, wow. yeah. I, I would cue them up. Like if it was like Christmas, I was like, all right, I'll record extra ones. But I didn't <laughs> miss a single day because uh, I was like, there was like a part of a voice telling me like, you just have to. If you stop doing like like anything like <laughs> like uh, uh, if you stop doing it, you're gonna lose your momentum. Like you just have to. Yeah. Mm, uh, I don't know. And that's how, like, sort of desperate I was to, like, just keep going, just keep going, you know. Um, and so, I mean, that led to it, you know, it, it led to other things. And, it, it, like, like as I'm sure you're very familiar. And I, I, I'd be curious to hear your trajectory as well, like, after this. But um, it led to, you know, there's, like, indie games, and indie games lead to this. And you you mm -hmm. work, you do good with this person, and they refer you to this person. And you, you, you're, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's just how excuse me, how it just sort of uh, evolves is, is that that's how your career sort of goes. But um, yeah, I would say that audio centric comedic development period uh, really has a big impact on how my skits are edited and that I, I that how it sounds like to me, if you, yeah, if you obviously you need to see what's going on for my skits, but if you know the vis visuals well enough and just listen to it, uh, which I know people like the audio because they rip it off for TikTok all the time. I hear. <laughs> I hear. Apparently, I'm very popular on TikTok for dubs of my audio or of my audio, but I I don't use That's TikTok. That's awesome. Is it awesome? No, <laughs> it's, it's, it? it's, it's flattering. Yeah, I guess. Um, but well, have you ever had people like send like voice impressions of you, and it's like, what is happening? Oh, voice impressions. It's interesting. I don't get a lot of people trying to impersonate my voice. Now, I'm sure you do <laughs> with uh, some of your <laughs> characters. Uh, I, but I don't get a lot of voice impressions of me. Uh, so before I... Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's usually... Uh, I, I don't know if is, if it's something about my voice is hard, like voices are hard to pin down or I don't know. It's just, I don't get a lot of people trying to like copy them. Like 
I'll, I, I'll get a lot of. Compa- well, I definitely have friends that quote your stuff to me. Oh, so. okay, interesting. <laughs> I'll have um, comparisons drawn a lot, which I'm also sure you have oh. had. Like people go, "Oh, you mm-hmm. sound like um, this per this actor or this non actor." Like uh, mm-hmm. y- whether it's other YouTube people, other actors, um, they say, "Oh, you sound like this," but they don't try to like impersonate me. Uh, do you mm-hmm. get a lot of like? people trying to i mean do they send you impersonations of your of your characters to you yeah i've seen and not like a lot Mm. i've seen them um sometimes and maybe it's like um challenges or something and so they'll send to me like hey i tried my uh, impression of your character in this thing and so I'll, i'll see some of those sometimes or um i guess if they're doing like parody videos and they'll have somebody do a, a, a character that I had done, mm. and then uh, that'll eventually make its way back to me. Sure, sure. Uh, and then, so I'll see those, and it's it's just kind of eerie because I'm like, <laughs> wow, I, back in the day I used to impersonate uh. like, um, <laughs> voice actors, and now it's happening to me. What is what's happening? <laughs> uh, you don't have to name a specific one if you don't want, but is that was there ever one where you're like, oh fuck, that's pretty close? <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I I. Unfortunately, don't remember the um, person's Twitter handle anymore. Mm. But she did an impression of, uh, I think it was my like Persona Five character mm-hmm. uh, for something, uh-huh. and I, I think it was that. No, maybe it was Fire Emblem. But yeah, I listened to it and I was like, I'm almost convinced that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So I kind of talked about my sort of vaguely about my but I also have talked about it on the podcast before so I don't need to go like into full detail but for you so um w- what is sort of like uh your trajectory into getting into the profession like what did you like where did you start from so I um I started uh in theater okay um back in like I guess my first foray was in like middle school mm. and I'm like deeply shy and introverted and um awkward and still kind of am but um but I, I found the, um acting and being on stage and to be very fun and a, and you know like a group effort that everybody enjoyed um it was an interesting way to um connect with other mm. people because you know you're you're connecting with this character and people are connecting with like what your performance so in a way you're all connected and i can i liked that aspect a lot about it so i continued um doing theater all through high school and i pursued it in college mainly not just for acting because i didn't know if it would be a career mm-hmm, or not mm-hmm. um and um, maybe I was, I thought maybe I would do other like production um, type careers or something. Sure. And I didn't discover voice acting until um, maybe my second year of college. Mm-hmm. I was watching anime and I was like, this, it'd be really cool to do something like yeah. this. And I was like, oh, that's, that would be really cool. What if that's a thing? And I looked at it and I was like, oh, of course it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um and I talked to, um, um, I went to rehearsal and I was talking to a um, a castmate um, friend of mine and about, you know, like wanting to do voiceover for anime or something. And she said, oh, there's like a voice acting competition that happens at Anime Expo every year. Maybe you should look into that. Mm. And that's how. And then I looked that up. They were still taking um, entries to compete and I signed up, and at the time they had it set up so that you had to find your own monologue from a game or an anime, oh, okay. memorize it, come memorize in and perform it. it. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's so different now because it's. Um, I think they have it formatted where you have a script, sort of like a like a dub script, mm-hmm. and you do that. But back then you had to memorize it. Oh, shit. So when I went in, I got up on. Uh, in front of everybody and I was so nervous yeah. that I said three words and my mind went completely blank and I was like okay getting ready to run in three two uh. <laughs> and, then, and then it came back so I was like mumbling and then it came back and I just like went right back into it like you know on autoplay yeah basically what was the and monologue uh, it was from Lucky Star. Oh, because wh- <laughs> that was like really big at the time. Which character? 
I think she's like the pink haired one that's like super cute. She like she the does glasses, like the lucky channel. Oh, oh 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 the the um I, the host one with, right. Yeah, so she has like that split kind of mm. not split personality but dual personality. Gotcha. So I play. I, I chose that specifically because it would show like this like you know cutesy anime sound, but also like this kind of like rough like yelly kind of like uh you know anger yeah, angry yeah. kind of like yell. So I wanted to show like a range of emotion, um, which is what yeah. So that's why I chose that in particular, and yeah. So I made it as a finalist, mm. and then. I I didn't really expect to get very far because I knew nothing about voiceover. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but I think because I had acting training prior, sure. that it kind of helped me get through that. And I didn't win. Um, it was Kira Buckland because she is amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, even though I didn't win, I still got like the prize, which was a studio tour oh. and a chance to do a test read. And so I've been working since then. I am lucky to say that I pretty much learned on the job mm, um, yeah. is through the massive patience of uh, Tony Oliver mm-hmm. um, teaching me how to how to dub and how to relax. I was super nervous uh, in my first session. What was your first session? It sounds session? really stiff. Oh, God. Uh, it was for a character named Siesta in a show called uh, The Familiar of Zero. Oh, okay. I've heard of it. Uh, okay. Oh. But, Yeah. I don't know. When I listen back to it now, I can like hear how stiff I was. <laughs> well, I mean, of course you will, uh, but, and you, know. you grow as an actor. So yeah, it's like you know, of yeah. course it, it... you get used to like the rhythm of it because like dubbing is so different than mm. if you're just um, uh, performing something um, not to picture. Yeah, like prelay. Yeah, it, 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 it's mm-hmm. it, it's it's an, it's an art form in itself. The dubbing. It, it's 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 so precise and like trying to match those those flaps yeah um yeah i I was talking to uh do you know um abby uh abby trot yeah Yeah. uh, i had her on not super long ago uh and i had a very similar story and i think i think she or her what i think she was in new york uh, and, and did the mm. and the did the co- the same on the same sim- bang zoom competition, but there, <laughs> uh, and uh, flew huh. out. Uh, and I was like, yeah, like um, I know, I know, I know a good number of uh, voice actors. Uh, also, like, ha- like I mean, Kira also being one of them. Like uh, mm-hmm. a lot of those bang zoom sort of contests were how a lot of people kind of got their start. Um, it, yeah. it, do they I, still do those? I think they did uh, up until like you well, know, re- the, the pandemic sure. happened. But they were, uh, they had um, started doing them at uh, Anime Central, I believe. Mm, okay. So like in up in Chicago, or as opposed to like here in LA. Gotcha. Um, so I know that they were continuing to do the competition um, out that way. Mm. So it's kind of cool. I think that they they do make an effort to bring in a lot of like fresh new talent all the time, mm-hmm. try to help build them up. Gotcha. Now, uh, sort of going back to um, like y- you mentioned um, having the shyness, and then theater sort of having you <laughs> being a way to sort of overcome it. It was so it was through theater you sort of found an, a, a love for acting. Uh, and then I, I mm-hmm. like to ask a lot of actors, uh, what is your, what what are some of the greatest things about acting? What do you like the most about acting? As generic as that sounds. I, I, I feel like some people have interesting answers for this. Huh. I guess growing up, I did a lot of just like reading. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess I just like connecting to stories and connecting to characters and um, getting to perform a character, you know, you really get to, like, dig deep in to, like, this person's, like, psyche and, like, mm. get to figure out, like, what makes them tick? Why do they respond this way? Like, you know, they that how they responded to that is not how I would have responded to it, like, said situation. And um, so I think that's, like, what's... F- I think that's what really... Um, gives me a kick out of acting is just trying to um get to be these like larger than life characters Mm. because i feel like my life is you know fairly normal (laughs) (laughs) um 
So I think that's what makes it really exciting. You know, you get to be somebody with like superpowers or, you know, like they do like some uh, heroic thing or maybe they're going through some sort of drama that, you know, that you've never experienced or never heard of or this and that. So Mm -hmm. I guess... That's it for me. So it, it, it's you? like a way for you to sort of like experience things you'll never get to experience. I mean, in a both in a positive yeah. and negative, like you know, both in like a you don't want to experience like you know getting your arm blown off or whatever. But there's still like True. there's still an interesting <laughs> like getting to play that like you know is still uh, sort of cathartic in its own way, right? Even if even if you're playing a character who is. Uh, it is. suffering it's still it, there there is a, a, a sort of catharsis of like uh getting to that level of emotion because uh, uh, hopefully like you know you never have to go through what <laughs> and not, not also not only the bad stuff for characters but also you know the highs of character the good stuff of characters is like uh the joys mm-hmm. as well um oh for for me um i i think it's just a i could what i call it uh, a sort of high when I have when I'm uh, acting is just the when I feel like I have uh, sort of become not become the character but you know like lose myself in it like where I just am very mm-hmm. in it just in it uh, and there's a like I am not necessarily worried about like oh I gotta make sure I uh, hit the line in this way it's like just just going like really feeling like you're the character and it's similar to what you're saying like yeah like th- that to me because not only that but it lends itself to there is a synergy you will feel with like you know the director of like okay yeah we're we're on the mm-hmm. same page like we're getting it we're getting it like it's definitely a collaboration it's a, it's a, it's a very satisfying you just feed off each other's energy exactly yeah it's 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 really fun to feel that and I don't like I don't immerse myself in roles that like you said like that are larger than me that I would never get to play you know it, 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 it's I don't know it, it's just uh very very satisfying uh and it, you you come out of the a sessions you know sometimes just being like fuck that was fun or wow that was like that was, yeah. it was just it, it, there's like there's I totally like relate with the with the um you know getting into the character like you get so sucked into it that you kind of like lose you know a sense of where you are mm-hmm. because you're like really deep into your imagination and like after like the director tells you like you know like the general storyline where you are and all those other details and um you know I, I tend to get so wrapped into that that you know when people ask me later on like oh what was it like being in that session it was like well I don't really remember because you know you get I, I just remember the general feeling of it all mm. but like when it comes to anything like specific like lines or like um you know people have asked like oh funny stories and this and that I'm like well I don't really <laughs> remember you know point. obviously we're joking and having a good time yeah. but you know a lot of it's like off the cuff or it's like you know related to what's happening in that moment that it's hard to like explain to somebody else and have let them you know have them be in on like why it's funny or enjoyable that is a very good point that like because you know i get asked a lot like funny story in the booth or like and or favorite line and it's like it, it it's the you know with our our involvement in it is so different right because a mm-hmm. line that might be like super memorable to someone who is playing the game or watching the show or whatever to us that might have been just like a one like one cue we just nailed and they're just like all right next like <laughs> it was good but yeah I was, like, I was like oh that's pretty funny all right next and then you have it, it's like asking like somebody hey uh what's the funniest thing you said yesterday it's like i, I don't i don't <laughs> i don't know well, what did i say yesterday i don't remember like uh yeah. it, it's it's an interesting like like i and i totally feel that of like um you come out of it like it's like you I, it, like when people ask favorite lines it's almost like i remember like ex, like sort of character yeah like, can you mention character vibes like just like how it felt to mm-hmm. play a character a character a character or play like <laughs> a certain scene um 
but I don't remember what it was what was necessarily said. Like if you think back yeah. on your memories, uh, do you remember exactly what the words were in a necessarily in like a memory? Not maybe if it's like a very, but usually you just remember like the feelings and the gist and like you know I don't know. It, it, it's it's mm -hmm. I, I think that's. I just never really thought about why it's so hard to answer those questions for people. It's like, I'm, yeah, especially if it's like a huge gap between like when you did the session true, and yeah. when the product comes out. And then like for and it takes time for people to consume whatever that is before it like loops back to you. And it's like, well, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I spent maybe a day on that project. I don't necessarily remember specific little details. That, yeah, then it's. It, I mean, that was like four hours. It was one thing I said in four hours two years ago. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't recall. Like, I, I mean, I don't know about you. Like, uh, this is also kind of an interesting thing. But like, I haven't. Have I played anything that I'm in? I don't think I've played very much anyway. Or if if of like games I've been in, I've seen shows that I'm in, mm -hmm. like, but mm -hmm. I have not really played. Like, do you like for stuff that you're in, like sh whether it's shows or games or whatever? Do you like have you seen or played a lot or, or just seen your own performances like a lot? Like, and I'm not talking about like you look up a clip, but like, have you consumed the <laughs> like the medium like as as like the a regular fan would like of your own, of that stuff that you're in often? Um, I do try to for um, shows, like if I can just sit and like binge watch something, mm. that's a little bit easier than like um, like an RPG, JRPG sure. that's like hours and hours um, long. I've only played through Persona 5 mm. beginning to end, and that's very rare for me because I'm, I'm not a huge gamer. Like I, and like especially for me to finish a game that long, is um kind of rare mm -hmm. but um so it's the only one for me thus far um i do try to play some games but oh, unfortunately i don't like have a lot of time or dedicate a lot of time to finishing mm -hmm. them so it it does kind of like boil down to looking up let's play oh, yeah. and like looking for my character specific scenes to see how they turned out Oh no, I, I do that yeah, all the like, time. Yeah, that, that, I'm not saying I'm exempt from that either. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> well, like. Oh yeah, like it's it's like, and it's that thing of please let there be no player commentary on it. Let me let me find a, a, a yeah. no player commentary. Don't skip the Don't dialogue. Don't skip let the me dialogue. Listen, Don't please. talk over the dialogue, please. I just want to hear it. <laughs> uh yeah no I, I and sometimes it's a different experience too because then you hear like what you're responding yeah. to because a lot of times it's like you're acting in a vacuum you don't see the other lines yeah. sometimes like you do and sometimes like if there's time the director will like read you in mm -hmm. but you know to see the other actors performance com um in junction with yours is pretty cool yeah no it, it's, it's it's interesting like uh I, I, like there's that and there's also like Oh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> like, like that's what that's what my character looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my character sometimes looks like you, that. There's no oh, art. <laughs> interesting. My character looks like that and that because sometimes you said you, you have to like imagine in your head, right? You have to like mm -hmm. uh, there. I mean, there's stuff that you know I still don't know <laughs> like what what the character is gonna look like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'll see, like. I have so it's this interesting. It's kind of like reading a book, right? That has no like, and you just <laughs> imagine what people look like in your head. That's just you're just constantly doing that, like, uh, yeah. in the in the booth of just okay. Well, I imagine this. I don't know what this person looks like. Uh, I'll just imagine they look like this, and <laughs> and we'll see. And then uh, it, seeing the final product is like, oh, okay, that's that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, shit! It's it's uh, we've uh, we've hit an hour. I uh, I think this. Oh, yeah, wow. I, <laughs> I I this was a, a pleasure. Thank you for uh, taking the time to um, uh, sit down and chat. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, where can people find you? They can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook uh, at it's Xanthor. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, this was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.